Hello, newborn desert tortoise. Welcome to your world. Look around. Break out of your shell and explore what lies ahead. Stretch your legs. Feel the desert soil. One thing for sure though, it won't be easy. This is a male? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that tail. Yeah. It appears that the desert tortoise is, is in trouble. At, uh, I think, eight or nine study sites, we saw declines from 30 to 50 percent. The tortoise started having severe population declines in about 1989. Very few of the small tortoises survive. There's about a 95 percent mortality rate within the first five years. We're seeing declining populations due to a, a variety of factors, not not just disease, not just predation, not just habitat loss, but I think a mix of all those things are really causing some declines that I hope we can reverse. Desert tortoises have lived across the southwest landscape for thousands of years. Their adaptation to its extreme harsh environment is amazing. Surviving ground temperatures greater than 130 degrees Fahrenheit and able to live a year or even two without water. But now, the desert tortoise is in danger of extinction. In the 1920s, there were hundreds of desert tortoises per square mile in parts of the Mojave Desert. Now, in those same areas, there may be fewer than a dozen per square mile. Tortoise extinction would have a ripple effect across the desert. As tortoise numbers drop, so too do the numbers of underground burrows that they dig. A wide host of animals depend upon these burrows for shelter from extreme summer heat and the cold of winter. Even in a protected critical habitat area like the Red Cliffs Desert Reserve in southern Utah, the tortoise population dropped nearly 50 percent since 2000. But perhaps science can yet turn the tide. Science can give us a lot of information on how best to manage populations and areas in which the tortoises live. I work with uh, the Desert Tortoise Recovery Office. Our job is to facilitate recovery efforts for the species. There's four states, three Fish and Wildlife Service regions, countless agencies and stakeholders and interest groups and researchers. Much of the research guiding the recovery effort is being carried out by ecologists and biologists with the Department of the Interior U.S. Geological Survey. USGS researchers are conducting a really great variety of research including tortoise physiology, uh, general ecology, the responses to fires, disease and health, hibernation, reproduction, all aspects of their ecology. What works, what doesn't work, the more we can learn about the tortoise, the better chance we have of bringing it back. Because the Mojave Desert Tortoise is listed under the Endangered Species Act, there is a federal mandate to restore the populations. The tortoise is among the top recipients of federal dollars because their decline has been quite sudden and wide-ranging. And because they are so long-lived, it takes years to know which recovery efforts are working or not. The Mojave Desert covers some 25,000 square miles. It is a part of Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and California. Over 30 years ago, USGS researcher Christine Berry set up 27 study plots in the Mojave and adjoining Colorado deserts. These plots were designed to help understand how tortoise populations and their habitats might be changing over time. The long-term study plots provide a substantial amount of data on the status and trends in tortoise populations. They're places one can return to year after year, decade after decade, and find out how the tortoise populations are doing. 
I selected for long-term study 15 of the plots that had an adequate sample size of at least 20 to 30 tortoises uh, per square mile. These plots have all experienced declines in tortoise numbers and have helped identify some of the causes behind that decline. 18, 19, in this particular plot near Needles, California, the scientists are counting the numbers of the invasive plant Saharan mustard. It is one of several invading plant species causing widespread change to southwest deserts. There were 6,000 in this group on the same transect where there was a handful in 1999. The proportion of plants that we have now, 10 years later, is just enormous. It's been a major change. Exact impacts of this invasion are being assessed. The invaders take up precious water and nutrients. If the trend continues, there's likely to be a profound effect on native creatures such as the desert tortoise. Invasive plants pose other dramatic threats as well. So one of the threats facing desert tortoises today is increased wildfires because of the invasion of exotic grasses and things which uh, perpetuate a fire cycle that is not historically present in the Mojave Desert. The dry stems of spreading invasive grasses fuel devastating backcountry fires. Tens of thousands of acres of critical tortoise habitat have burned in one year. Native plant foods disappear. Shrub and shade covers are eliminated. Some tortoises have been burned to death. And it looks like this is going to be a recurring risk for a long time, at least until we figure out how to deal with the invasive grasses. The Desert Tortoise Conservation Center was originally established as a way station for tortoises displaced by Las Vegas development. Today, with the expertise of management by the San Diego Zoo and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, it will fill a key role by providing a base for applied research, training, and community support. One of the USGS studies underway at the center involves a promising head starting program. Head starting is taking place at several locations across the Mojave. It's a technique where captive tortoises lay eggs in pens, with the young being raised and later released, that so that researchers can better learn about their survival. Since females lay the eggs deep in burrows, how do scientists know when the eggs are laid, so they can get the eggs to incubate them? 14727. So we're in the process now of every two weeks, we x-ray the female tortoises. Put the tortoise on the plate. And I'm gonna shoot the x-ray now. Okay, stay back, done. Okay. This is one of the x-ray images that we just shot about five minutes ago. And this is tortoise 14998. And you can see five uh, visible shelled eggs within the x-ray here and subsequently, if they lay eggs based on the weight change, we know that at least the six eggs that we x-rayed last week have been deposited somewhere inside the uh, enclosures. We will go and find the nest and collect the eggs and then put them in incubators to uh, hatch hatchlings. You guys, I found an egg. Got one? Yeah. All right. Oh. Once the eggs laid in the ground, the temperature in which the eggs are incubated on will determine the sex of the, the hatchling. Warmer temperatures are going to produce females, cooler temperatures are going to produce males. Once the eggs hatch in the incubators, one of the first things we're going to do is remove them from the incubator, put them in some sort of outdoor enclosure, um, allowing them to get the natural sunlight and hopefully the natural vegetation that they would normally be eating and then uh, just monitor these animals and try to ensure survival as best we can.